Hi, everybody. I'm Carl Soule. I wanted to take a moment and do a little bit of an update to a video that I did sometime earlier in the year uh, dealing with HDR video and high dynamic range content. Um, we're getting a lot of customers that are kind of dealing with the fact that maybe their footage doesn't look quite the same in Premiere 2022 or 2023 than it did in past versions. And part of the reason for this is Adobe is adding color workflows into Premiere where we're actually doing color management. And uh, just to quickly recap the video that I talked about before, um, with certain formats, when you bring in your footage, if you have shot your footage using a high dynamic range format, we're actually recognizing the color space and recognizing it as HDR footage as you're bringing the footage in. And this can mean that something that looked one way in an older version of Premiere can look different in a modern version of Premiere. Um, Adobe is tackling this on kind of a case by case format. So what I'm about to show you um, is true for a lot of different formats, but it might not be every format. If you are used to the idea of going into like uh, source uh, effect controls and playing with some raw settings, that might still be the valid way of working with things. If you've been managing this with LUTs in the past, that also might still apply. It really just depends on what format you're working with. And the one format that I wanted to, you know, mostly show you here and what I'm gonna be working with today is actually footage that is shot on one of these. So um, with the iPhone, there's been a setting that's been turned on for the camera for the last while, which enables the phone to shoot in a high dynamic range mode. And that's where we're seeing the vast majority of customers running into problems with this. So I wanted to talk first about just some of the basics of dealing with color management when you're working inside of Premiere. Um, something I didn't cover in my last video is how your laptop is currently set up can actually have an impact on how Premiere is viewing things. There is actually a preference inside of Premiere that deals with what we call display color management and whether we're gonna show you extended dynamic range monitoring. So if you are trying to do high dynamic range workflows where you're gonna be you know, playing this back on an HDR display, um, these are things that you need to know about if you wanna work effectively in these environments. It's difficult to show this in a video sometimes because you know, I can tell you that you know, I'm working with a MacBook Pro that's got a Pro XDR display that has uh, brightness values that hit something like 1,600 nits, meaning it's like, wow, it's really bright when you shoot footage in these high dynamic range formats. But how does that translate over to a video that you're watching on a platform like YouTube? Well, you know, I can't always show you exactly what's going on, but I can use some scopes and monitors to kind of help show you um, what I'm seeing uh, using some different values. Now, the first couple of settings to be aware of that exist in the software today, um, here's where we turn on display color management. Now, display color management is not overall color management, but what this does is it makes sure that the source monitor and the program monitor are aware of what color profile you're using for your display. And it will show you something that will look correct for that particular format. Um, extended dynamic range monitoring, um, if you are using an HDR enabled display, such as what I'm using here today with this XDR uh, Pro display from Apple, um, it's built into my laptop. If, uh, if you have an extended dynamic range display that supports something like HDR10, HDR10+, hybrid log gamma, um, these different formats, it means that the program and source monitors are gonna show you those high dynamic range values uh, locally to you in the display. And I gotta tell you, when you shoot footage in HDR mode on a phone, you bring it into Premiere, it is amazing. It looks uh, absolutely fantastic. But that same footage in standard dynamic range, if you're not set up correctly, can look blown out. It can look washed out. The colors can look wrong, basically. 
So a couple of things. First off, if you are going to work in that space, I do recommend having both of these turned on. At the very least, I do recommend having this display color management turned on simply because a lot of modern Macs use what is called a P3 display, which has different color than Rec. 709 video, which is the majority of you know, broadcast video, majority of the cameras that we're typically shooting with. Um, now, if I go into my system preferences, you'll notice that there is a, a color preset here. Under displays, I can select a display and I can go to the presets here. And if you're really looking to do accurate color, you need to care about what this is set for. Um, if this setting is wrong, it means all the work you're doing in Premiere trying to grade your footage is going to be wrong. Um, you know, it's not necessarily going to look the way that you want it to when you get to your final output. You'll notice that there are presets in here for high def TV, HDR video presets, um, as well as some other, other presets in here. But the vast majority of us should be using probably the HDTV or the HDR video preset uh, to make the footage look as good as it can. That is going to impact how Premiere translates the footage and makes it part of you know what you see in the program monitor what you see in the source monitor so that's kind of stage one is just knowing what kind of display you're working on and making sure that the operating system is using the correct profile step two is making sure the sequence that you're working on is also set up correctly when you're inside of a sequence under sequence settings Premiere will read what the working color space is based on the footage that you bring in, or when you create a sequence, it's going to have a working color space setting that typically will default to Rec. 709. Rec. 709 is the standard for color for most broadcasting environments. So if you are using footage from and you plan on delivering to a high dynamic range environment, you may want to change your working color space to Rec. 2100 or uh, for either HLG or PQ. And those in the know will know what those are. I, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to get into an explanation of the differences between the two, um, but just know that those are two potential uh, uh, working color spaces that we can use to, uh, to work with high dynamic range footage. Even if you're in Rec. 709, Premiere uses what we call extended range Rec. 709, meaning we can still work in high dynamic range, but the color is not going to, we're going to try and kind of keep the color within this, this uh, Rec. 709 space. There can be some translation differences between Rec. 709 and Rec. 2100, so it's important to, uh, to understand and use the correct one. Now, lastly, and this is where things change so much that it got people uh, really confused. If you have footage that is high dynamic range, and this is a timeline, some footage that I shot uh, in Titus Canyon in Death Valley back in 2021, um, this footage is all shot in high dynamic range. It's got you know beautiful, uh, richly saturated highlights, but these clips, um, if I'm trying to do something for standard dynamic range, everything is going to look blown out. It's going to look washed out and the color isn't going to look correct. If I reveal this clip in the project, here it is here, right click on it. There's some settings under the modify interpret footage uh, panel for what type of color space that we want to use with this footage. Now, You'll notice right now this is set to use the media color space from the file. It's recognized that this iPhone footage was shot using Rec. 2100 HLG. If my timeline's not set for that, if that's not my delivery uh, specification, if I need to deliver this in Rec. 709 standard range, I need to do some massaging and tweaking of the footage. This is where this color space override can come in real handy. I can say, don't use the color space that we recognized from the file. I can tell this to use Rec. 709 as the color, uh, as the color space. And in doing so, that is going to make the footage conform into that Rec. 709 space. Now, if I show you this on a scope, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring up the Lumetri scopes here for a second. I currently have my scope set to HDR mode just to show you the, the differences here. Um, if you're not familiar with this, just really, really quick. Um, 
normal video would have a value from zero to 100 nits. Anything over 100 nits is pushing into high dynamic range. And one of the standards, and there are numerous standards out there, basically goes from zero to 1,000 nits. In theory, you can go as high as 10,000 nits. Nobody's really doing that right now. <laughs> uh, you need a nuclear-powered television to display that. So, um, but going zero to 1,000 nits is, is a fairly common workflow that we see people working in this space. Right now, since I've reset this to be Rec. 709, everything is compressed down into that zero to 100 range. You're not seeing any values going above 100 here. But if I take this clip, let me just go back over here and we will reset this. I'll go to Modify, Interpret Footage, set this back to Rec. 2100 and click OK. Immediately, you can see that we're pushing values above 100. And that is the key difference here. You know, you want to make sure that you're using just that standard range when you're uh, delivering for standard range. Anything above 100 is going to be washed out, blown out. It's not going to look good. And if you're on a standard dynamic range monitor, that means you bring in your footage and you go, wow, why is everything over overexposed? It doesn't look good. Well, it's because it is exposed correctly for HDR. It's exposed for a range of zero to a thousand. You're only looking at zero to a hundred. Okay, now that is part of the issue. The second half of this issue has to do with some differences between color for uh, Rec. 709, Rec. 2100, um, and also taking color values and correctly tone mapping them down into that standard dynamic range space. Um, I'm going to go back to modify interpret footage for a second. One way to handle this with the current shipping version as of today, November 2022, 20, uh, is in addition to overriding the color space and setting this to Rec. 709, it's possible to also tone map or tweak the color a little bit by adding some sort of a LUT, a lookup table. Um, I have a LUT file here called HDR Conversion LUT. I'll put the URL up on the screen of where I got this from, but this is something that uh, another user actually created this LUT. There are a number of them out there depending on what type of camera you're working with, uh, depending on what type of uh, footage you have. But this is just one example here where I have used this input LUT to add a conversion LUT to this. And when I click OK on this, not only does the footage have kind of a nicer feel to it, it doesn't have quite of a harsh look. It kind of brings back some of the uh, the color. So the maximum red values in that 2100 space are mapped correctly to the proper values in Rec. 709. So this is one way of handling this today. Now moving forward, as we move forward to new versions of Premiere, I just wanted to cover this. This is the exact same project loaded up in a beta version of Premiere. So at some point in the future, we're going to have this functionality built into Premiere directly. Instead of using a LUT to change this footage, and let me just make sure I'm on, uh, I want to find a really good clip here. Here's one with a lot of uh, a lot of color in it with this sunset. I'll bring it up on both monitors here. Um, let me go ahead and find that in my project. And if I take this clip and do that same modify interpret footage, I can change this clip uh, to a different color space here. That functionality, I could still do this if I needed to. But where we're headed with this, if I select this sequence, I can go into sequence settings change my working color space for the sequence and say I want this to be Rec. 709 and you'll notice there's a new checkbox here to automatically tone map media. So moving forward what you will need to do once this beta feature comes to the shipping version is you'll be able to tone map this footage and by doing this this is going to automatically um, make sure that the colors look as accurate as possible without having to add an extra LUT to your footage to get it into that 709 space and make it look correct. So we're excited that this is coming. This is kind of the last piece of the, uh, the color management puzzle. Um, so definitely stay tuned for when that ships.
Hopefully this is, again, this is kind of an addition to a video that I did uh, a while back. If you're coming to this new, I think I've covered just about everything I covered in that video, but definitely check uh, on my YouTube channel for uh, that older video, because I think I go a little bit more in depth as to the why this is happening and why we're doing this. Um, but otherwise, this is what uh, you do today to help to manage this. And then moving forward, this is a future feature that is uh, coming. It's currently in the public beta that you can access today if needed. Thanks so much for watching.